Hi, this is Diane with uh, Phil Sewing Virtual Club. Uh, today what I'm going to show you is um, how we can create this cute little needle case, you know, with decorative stitches. Okay, these decorative stitches are brought into the embroidery field and um, showing how to create them and how to line them up and um, I think it's a cute little project to, to show you how you can work with some of those motif stitches uh, rather than using them in the sewing mode, but um, taking them into the embroidery field and stitching them out. So um, there's a few things that I want to show you before we begin, though. Uh, there's a new product out, and it's called the Magnifying Lenses. And this, this actually came in quite handy when I was uh, using uh, and bringing in the, the, the stitches um, and also embroidering it out using this because it zooms into the area that you're embroidering. And with this, you get three different lens magnifications, uh, 1.25 by 1.5 and a 2.0, or 2 point, uh, just 2 point, okay? Um, and it attaches to the machine very, very easily and swiftly. And then when you're not using it, it kind of swivels out of the way so that it doesn't interfere with any of your um, uh, any of your stitches or anything that you, you've got going on there near the needle itself. Okay. So um, I'm going to oh, it's in the box. Of me. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just take it out. It comes in four different pieces. You get the, the holder, which is, attaches to the machine up in this area. And then this is the magnification. This is the 2.0. And so I'm going to just slide that in like that. And then what you do, you take this and it slides up in here into the corner. At first, it was a little bit uh, trying to figure out the location. And then once you figure out that location... Here, let's see. There it is. There it is. And then this swings out like that. And it's down in to see that needle. Swing it at any angle. Okay. And then after you're done with it, if you choose not to use it, you just swing it up and around. And it tucks in there. It's hidden away until you need it again. Okay. And of course, you can use the other two magnifiers as well as needed. You know, you'll figure out which one you need the most when you start using it. But this is a really nice little uh, added bonus, you know, for uh, when you're embroidering and you're trying to get right down really close into the needle area. Okay. But anyway, let's get started. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into this area and we're going to work our way through how you create this cute little um, needle case. Okay. Uh, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, first thing we need to do to, to get our screen set up for um, our design is to click on Hoop Options. Okay, so I know that the size of this is going to be a 4x4 four four square. So I'm going to select a hoop size that's smaller um, because the default is set for the uh, Creative Supreme Hoop, which is 360 by 260. And I know that 120 by 120 is, a, is about five inches square. So, so I'm gonna, so I have a little bit more room to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and say the 150 by 150 hoop. Okay. Once I select the hoop, I'm going to say, well, I don't have to say OK because it's already highlighted. So I'm going to just close out of this field. And then right here, you can kind of see the white line. That's the designation for the hoop size that we've selected. OK. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to come down below here and select one of these options. We've got edit design, we've got hoop options, we've got, and we chose the hoop option to set up our hoop to begin with. We have edit stitch, we've got uh, sequence creator, we've got stitch creator, we've got shape, and then we've got applique creator. So we're going to choose applique creator. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to come up here on the side toolbar and select our basic shapes. And I'm going to choose a square box. Okay. Okay. You can see here when, when we bring this in that our, um, the size of the, the applique square that we're using uh, is a little bit smaller than our hoop size. And you can see the hoop size here by the white lines, like I said earlier. Okay. So now we're going to go into applique or edit applique. 
and it edit applique that's where I'm going to resize the shape itself so if uh, so that it's four inches so if you click on the first 4.0 click OK to it and since we had the lock on it's going to resize bow or you know so that it maintains its square shape so now we're at 4.0 the shape okay I'm going to click OK to it Okay, then once we get into this field, we can start bringing in our decorative stitches and creating rows with the stitches itself. Okay, so now over here on the left toolbar, as you can see, you've got many different options where you can bring in designs, where you can open a file, uh, whatever it might be, you know. But what we're going to do is go to this zigzag line. That zigzag line it takes you into the sewing side of the machine itself. So in this particular field, this is where you're going to select the various stitch types that are built into the machine itself. So the first thing we're going to do is going to go to the satin fills. Okay, and I'm going to click on, we've got some men menus as well. So you have stitches and you can scroll down, you know, and see all the different stitches. But the one we're going to settle on for this particular uh, stitch is right here in 4.2 and it's stitch number 19. Okay, when it opens up, it opens up into sequence creator right here. That's highlighted, that's what it's in. Okay, in Sequence Creator, <clears throat> this is where we're going to actually be able to add a row uh, using that uh, creator. Now, one thing I want you to, uh, to also watch is under the Information category up here, in this here field, okay, it's going to show the size of that particular stitch that we're working on, okay. So, and we're going to always try to maintain four inches in length for all of our stitches or a little bit be below that number okay so we're going to click on sequence there is the stitch we brought in now what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, edit stitch and then here is where we can duplicate that stitch okay and like I said watch up here the first stitch itself is 0 0.354 okay and that's where it's going to be uh, shown the the length of the stitch that we're added so I'm going to go ahead and down here we have more options we can cut we can paste we can flip we can discard it if we don't want it or if we we figure that this isn't uh, the stitch I want uh, or we could duplicate it as well but before we do any of that there's one other feature that I think is totally fabulous here it's under the length so if we click on length we also get a density setting I want to increase the density level of that particular stitch so I'm going to decrease the, the stitch down 0 0.3 it started out at 0 0.4, but we're going to decrease that number to 0 0.3. By doing that, it's adding to the density of that stitch, which I really like a lot, especially when you're doing these stitches in the on the embroidery side. It gives them a little bit more of a heavy texture. So we're okay with that. So we're going to come over here now that we've duplicate or we've added the density. Anything that we copied and paste and add to, it's going to have the same density level that that original stitch has. So we're going to come in here. It duplicates it one after another. Okay. And I'm going to continue duplicating until it reads about four inches. So look under your information area. It's 3.90. We'll add one more to see if that works. Well, that takes you over four, four inches, and so we're going to decrease it. And to decrease, you're just going to delete one of those stitches. Okay? We're going to say okay to this. I like that length, so we're going to say okay. Takes us back into this field. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into place. Something like that. Now, anytime you bring any of the stitches in from the sewing field as such, they're always going to come in with the color black. Okay, so 
later on we're gonna we're gonna recolor some of these areas so it, it makes it easier such as this so if you look at this what I did is I recolored it you know every other one which is the satin stitch is going to be shown as every other stitch okay once you have your first design set in place you go back into your stitches on the stitching side okay we're going to go again into satin stitches for your heading 4.2 and I'm going to select stitch number eight once you get it on there it pops up into this field and then sequence creator is highlighted okay in sequence creator we're going to open it up and we're going to add or click on edit stitch and here again we're going to adjust the density level take it down to 0 0.3 okay and then come over here and add your stitches now here again we're going to have to watch for our length so it's at 4.13 so that's going to be outside of our four inch uh, uh, window so what we can also do with this is we can come up here under our length okay so under the length we can adjust these stitches individually okay so I'm going to go down with that one I'm going to select the next one going up click on the down or the minus to decrease the length of that stitch come up here do the same thing select the next one up decrease the length come to the last one decrease the length and then we're at 3.98 okay that's should be pretty good because it's below that four inch uh, that we want to stay within so go ahead and click OK and it sends it back into the embroidery edit mode we're going to put it approximately right there so we're going to put it like every other one with a satin stitch uh, but we can adjust these later as we go along okay so I think we're pretty well set there so we're going to continue on this at this mode clicking on but before we do that I wanted to deselect this so when you're working with this make sure you always deselect the last stitch that you placed Okay, so go ahead and click on your stitches, your stitch category, entering more of them. And this one I'm going to go to uh, 4, 2, and 14. Let's try this one. Okay, hold it down until they pop up onto your screen or your workspace. Then we're going to go into Sequence Creator. And in Sequence Creator, we're going to go into Edit, Stitch. And then here again, we're going to go into our density level, reduce it down to 0 0.3, okay? And then we're going to copy and paste. And as you see, as we go through this, we're at 3.94. Like I said, always watch your information bar because that's going to show you that length, okay? Click on OK. And once we get that in here, we're going to adjust the placement. About right there, so something like that. Okay. And like I said, these are all adjustable later on. Okay. So deselect. Go back into your stitches on the sewing side. Okay. And then we're going to select another design or another stitch, I should say. Uh, for two, let's see, I want this one. Oops, I should hold it down. When I hold it down, it sends it over into the embroidery edit field. Uh, then we can select the sequence creator. Watch up here again for your information. Click on edit stitch. We're going to adjust the density again. 0 0.3. Okay, and duplicate. Okay, that duplication uh, took us to 4.13. It's a little bit over again, so we can come back in here and adjust our length again. And I'm going to adjust each one of them individually. 
And you could be watching right up there as well to see what that current setting is, the size is, I should say. And take it down, 3.97. That's a good length as well, so we're going to click OK to it. <clears throat> OK, bring it down. Place it where we need it to place, approximately right there. OK, deselect it. Come back over into your stitch mode where you're retrieving them from, um, from the... Uh, sewing side of the machine. Um, now, um, let's see. Uh, you can act, oops, wrong one. You select one by mistake, guess what? We can go in there, hold it down. Oops, been deleted. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in there again to the stitch side, satin stitches. And I mean, you have lots of different opportunities in here to work with. Uh, I'm gonna, um, let's just, let's go to 4.3 and see if I can find another one in there that I can work with. Some of these are, are pretty large and so you'd have to just play around with them and see which ones you like the best. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go back up here. I'm going to try, did this one, I don't think, oh, here, I'll do this one, okay. So it's 4.2, let's go back there again, so right there it is, it's like a candle wicking design, so there it is. So come into Sequence Creator, um, Edit Stitch. Adjust your density level downward 0 0.3. Copy paste. That one is a little bit over. It's it's more than the others were over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete one of them. Okay. And I'm going to place this at the far side. Over here, like that. So now in between these rows, we're going to place additional stitches. Okay, so we're going to come back in here. So deselect your selection point, come back in here. And the next group, I'm going to go into the decorative stitches. Category 5. And I'm going to, let's see, actually, I'm going to go in here, number two. Some of these are, uh, uh, let's see, you can see some different ones in here as well. Uh, three, let's see, let's go back down here. How about this one? I like that one. So hold it in. So with this one, uh, it's more open, so we're going to place them, uh, or this particular one, in, in one of these areas right here. So go into Sequence View, and this time I'm not going to uh, adjust the density because, you know, it's, it's not even an option at this point for a stitch like this. Okay, so if I click down here, it doesn't open up into density setting. So this is the size of the stitch. That's the density of the stitch as well. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to watch my information guide to see, you know, the length of that stitch. So we can do a lot more here. Let's keep going. Oop, too many, 4.02. Let's take it back one, 3.9. I think I like that. So let's go ahead and say okay to it. And then what we can do is move it. Uh, we can put it over here or here. I think I like it over here better. Okay. Once you get it set, go ahead and deselect it. Repeat again using um, some of your uh, different stitches. In this one, I'm gonna choose stitch number 18. 
it's under the same category, quilting, um, 2.3. Okay, there it is. Go into sequence. And so a lot of this is very repetitive, but it's it's great for the muscle memory. You're going to remember how to do this, and that's always a good thing, you know, uh, where you don't have to go to the instruction book or whatever. But um, here we're going to duplicate this as well. Looking at our information field for the length. Okay, oops, we're over. So we went over by two. So, um... Let's delete another one, 3.78. Let's go ahead and say OK to that. And then this one, I'm going to put it over here. Something like that. And we're, we can adjust all these positionings later. So that's a good length as well. So back into the stitches category, loading the stitches. And then on this one, we're going to go down to uh, 2.3 and then select stitch number let's see where is it no uh, two point uh, let's see I think needle art I'm going to go into the needle arts 2 3.2 and of course you have lots of different options here so just try some of your different categories and you'll you'll be very pleasantly surprised 3.3 let's see what i can come up with here i like this one this is the one i was looking for hold it down there it is sequence creator then edit stitch duplicate here again you're watching your information board up there right here that's too many. Take it back. 3.90 is a good number, so let's go ahead and say OK to it. Once we get that in there, we can go ahead and place that stitch right here. OK. Let's move this over so we can see it a little bit better. Deselect. Come in. Load stitch. OK. And then we're going to go to, let's see, 3.3. Let's try 38. Okay, here it is. So we're going to go to Sequence Creator. I know I feel sound like a broken record here, but you know, the more times you do this, the more familiar you are with this action. Look up here for your 3.94. Perfect. Let's say OK to it. And we'll move it into position. Like right about there. Okay, kind of like that. Okay, uh, so we've got all of our spaces filled in. Let's deselect. Okay, so I deselected. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see this. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to recolor some of our um, areas. So we're going to recolor every other stitch. Like these first group that we brought in, those satin stitches, we're going to come in and we're going to come to our palette. Okay, so it's loading it all up here. And we're going to select multiples. So we're going to select this one, this one, this one, this one. And then this one. Oops. Oh, multiples didn't take, so we're going to go back and repeat those actions. Select those. Those are the ones that were the satin stitches. Okay. Then come up to change color. And this is where you can change your color for those stitches. Since when I embroidered mine out, I made all the, the satin stitchy ones, I made them all one color. So I'm going to come and adjust my wheel. This is the color in the middle that you, you can see. And it doesn't matter at this point what color you make it. This is just a color stop. So I'm going to make it a green, say OK to it. Okay, I wanted to deselect all of these 
and let's close that out and you can see how that looks. Now the next group we're going to do the same thing because uh, we're probably not going to stitch it out in black but we're still going to change the color uh, because we have the applique steps in there and those applique steps are all done in black as well. So we're going to check uh, select this one and I'm going to choose select multiples. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, and I believe we had four. So let's go into change color. Here we go. This time we're going to make it, oops, take this one up to a, take it down to a pinkish color. Say okay to it. And then all of those have been changed to the color. Okay. Now we're going to make adjustments um, to the placement within our four inch square area because we want when we when we stitch our last applique top the satin applique that goes around we want to make sure that all those stitches are kind of tucked underneath that last applique stitch so we're going to make sure that when we place these the first one looks pretty good second one looks pretty good this one right here uh, we're going to come into edit stitch I'm going to move it over to the left okay a little bit more okay something like that okay and then let's see anytime you want to see it. it's okay if your stitches touch uh, mine are not touching right now but that's okay as well uh, they're still going to turn out looking uh, very good I'm going to move this one over like that. And if we need to add another stitch, we might have to add another stitch as well. I'm going to do this one too. Okay. See how we did that? And so this is one way you're going to be in here customizing um, to make it look complete. This one, I'm going to move it over as well. If you hold it down uh, longer, then it, it scoots over a little bit faster. Okay, let's move this one over. I might have to add another stitch in here. Okay, let's see how that one looks. Okay, a little bit too far. Okay, let's put this one over. You can also just click on it and drag it over as well. Okay, something like that. That's not too bad. This one, let's move it over. Okay, let's see how that looks. I could actually add another stitch over there. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to go back into uh, loading stitches. Okay, this time I'm going to choose, uh, let's see, let's try, um, let's do this one. Oop, hold it down. Okay, that pops up. That's not too bad, I think. And you can addition stitches in this fashion. So, okay, I think that's perfect. Okay, so then we go back to Sequence Creator. Here again, we're going to watch up there in our information. Edit Stitch. We're going to copy paste. Uh, 3.5, let's try it, 4.66. Now, this particular stitch probably wouldn't work because we'd have to decrease the length of it by too much. And so what we're going to do with this is we're going to cancel. And we're going to find another stitch because that one did not work. Okay, and you're going to find some that don't work. They're too, the length of them is too long. So uh, we're going to go back in there. Okay, let's try, do, 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 do. let's do this one. Okay, that one might work. Let's put it over there. You can see how we're kind of auditioning our stitches to see if they'll work. So, Sequence Creator. Uh, this one will not have the ability to adjust the density either, but we're going to go into Stitch Edit and we're going to copy and paste. 
Okay, 3.3, 3.78. I think that might work. Okay, so let's go ahead and say okay to it. And then we're going to put it into position as well. Okay, I think we've got it, guys. Here we go. Now, of course, you always can edit like we were doing before, where we were positioning them so that they show up. Now, another thing that we want to do, since that came in as a different color because we selected after the after the fact, after we brought in all the other stitches, um, uh, this one too, we wanted to recolor that one. So we're going to select here, we're going to come into our palette again, and we're going to scroll down, and we're going to select, let's select this one and this one. Oh, multiple select, sorry, multiple select, and then this one. And then there was that one other one, it was right here. Okay, we want to change those all to that same color palette. So we're going to kind of get close to it at least. Somewhere in this neighborhood. And say okay to it. And select all. Let's close out and let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so there again, now we're going to make sure that we adjust them from the top and the bottom as well, so that they're pretty much tucked under the satin stitch. So if some are on top uh, or don't quite get to that satin stitch, that's okay. Um, I think that they will do just fine. Okay, so here we go. You're going to deselect that. That's perfect. That's perfect. And that's perfect. Okay. So, uh, next thing we're going to do, since I think that we've got them positioned pretty good right now, I'm going to come back into our layers, okay? Once we're in the layers, you know, we're going to select, oops, we want to make sure it's select multiples is on. Okay, and then we're going to group them together. Okay. Whenever you group something, it always sends it down to the bottom of the of your list of uh, layers. Okay. So we're going to select the next group. Okay. Not that one though. Not the first one. We've already grouped one, two, three, four, five of them. We're going to group them. And then we've got them grouped. Now, one of the things with with grouping them. Um, what happens with it is, if you were to move one, they all move together as one unit then, okay? So for instance, if I were to select the green, the greens are all going to select and be able to be moved at the same time. This is going to make it so that you don't uh, mistakenly move one at the same time, or one uh, separately from the others, Move it over. Oh, yep. If you do something like that, you can always do an undo, and it puts it all back into right here. Is an undo button right there? Okay. You can also use. I'm gonna put my lock key on. Oh, I'm gonna do this. Move it over. Something like that. Okay. We're all done. Okay. But anyway, that's kind of what the grouping will do for you. It, it puts them all together so that you can't move one without the other. And if you do move one, um, then it doesn't throw everything else off, off of kilter. Okay. But anyway, we're going to go back into our grouping, or into our layers, sorry. And we're going to uh, take the first one and the second one, group them together. Now it's one unit. We're going to take this one. So if I wanted to move the rotation, you know, because I want my layer, my uh, applique to stitch last because the applique is where I'm going to get that applique stitch to, that goes around the outer edge of your design to hold your back to your front and so forth. Uh, so we're going to send this down to stitch last into the last position. Okay. Then we can group, group those two together and all is good. Okay, close out of our layers, deselect, 
Now, what we're going to do as well, we're going to choose a different hoop size, okay? Uh, so choosing the hoop size, the one I'm going to use uh, is the 260 by 200. Close out of the hoops. And then I want to make sure that it's centered in the hoop. And it'll place it centered in the hoop itself. So now what I would do, I would go ahead, hoop my stabilizer, okay? And I'm going to go to my cutting table and hoop the stabilizer, and I'll be right back with you. After we, after we get everything set and ready to go, the next thing is we're going to go ahead and say stitch out. Okay, that's that last category down below there. Okay. Now, when you're using sequence mode and you're using all those individual little stitches, you want to sort them and you want to merge them together. Okay, because you want each of your rows to stitch in the same order that we placed them in. Okay, so we want to do that for sure. Okay, single needle plates. Okay, and everything else, we could do a base around. Um, I'm not going to do a base around at this point in time because we're going to, uh, we're using felt, okay? So that felt stays really nicely in the hoop itself, and so I don't think there's going to be a lot of shifting going on. So it says attach the hoop, and we're going to attach the hoop. Okay, I'm going to put our machine, and I believe, let's see, let's look under here. The first color is the green, so we're going to go ahead and stitch the green first. And so, whichever thread brand, and I use, uh, um, this one is a Roots and Anton thread brand, and it worked fine for me. Thread the machine. Make sure you replace your needle with a new needle so that um, you get a real good stitch, okay, and um, so forth. Now, when, over here, this is going to show the order that these are all going to stitch out in, okay? And so we're going to have a lot of green, and, and it's going to mix it up a little bit. Here's our applique, and one thing I should have done was change up my applique colors so that we could see them, so that the machine stops, and I didn't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop the machine ourselves okay so anyway we're going to go ahead and and we can select any orientation here from this field so if i wanted to stitch the the stitch number over here or way over here first i could actually choose that particular color and it would stitch that one first but at this point um it's okay if we stitch here and right here is where it's going to start to stitch so i'm going to go ahead and say okay to it, lower my presser foot, and hit the start button. There is a little bit of a pause between the stitches. A little bit of a pause, not bad, but there's a little bit because it's just going to jump to the other stitch. You can also, there's another category down here that you can look for stitch. Um, and it's going to show right here the, the total number of minutes that it's going to take. So this design is going to take about 21 minutes to sew out total. Okay? But you can see how it's finished one stitch and it's going to jump to the next. Gonna go do the next row. You can see it looks pretty.
Okay, we're on the last row of the green uh, decorative stitches. Okay, and then after that, we'll have to change um, uh, thread colors for the fill in stitches that go in between. And if you could see here, it really does a nice job by increasing that density level to, to a zero or to a point zero three, it, it, it forms that stitch very, very pretty. Okay, we're almost done. Okay. Okay, so the machine stops. Time to change thread. We use the yellow thread. Okay. And I'm going to just move this over here. And you can see, oops, kind of pulled down on it. It does stay up there very nicely. I kind of tugged at it. Okay. There we go. So you can see how that looks down in there. Okay, if you were to thread that needle by hand, this would be perfect. You know, you can see that eye of that needle very, very good. Okay, so I'm going to just move that out for the time being. And I'm going to go ahead and do the ch change thread, which we did. Since I had um, missed two of the thread changes, uh, the machine's going to stop. And so we just have to go ahead and start it out again without changing threads. So we have one, two, three areas of the yellow almost completed. And I think the machine should stop when we get to that next color because when I entered it in, it wasn't ex an exact match. But, you know, I knew that there's ways around uh, working with it, so we're going to make it work. Okay, it stopped, so we're going to say okay. Without changing threads, we're going to just continue on. And we'll have two more sections that we have to work with to the complete. And after those two sections are done, then we'll go ahead and do the applique part portion of the, of the design itself. Okay. 
We're done with that. Now starts the applique portion of uh, the project. Uh, okay, where's my scissors? Okay, so we're going to change threads, uh, put on the green thread, and we've got to do our tack down stitch to begin with. So a good thing or a good uh, option right now would be to wind a bobbin um, the same color as your top thread. Okay. Because then when it does that, that satin stitch around it, it's going to make for a very pretty um, edge to it, like right here. It's got the same color in the back side as it does on the front side. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start it up. And it's going to do the tack down. It's going to show us where to lay that, <clears throat> that section of felt to the underside of the hoop. Okay, so now we've got our, our felt. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place it underneath the hoop. Move this a little bit. Make sure it slides under there. There's a thread I needed to trim. Okay. We could put a piece of tape under there as well, if that would hold it in place. But we've got a big enough piece here that I think will be fine. Slide that hoop back on again. Making sure that it's under there. Twisted or folded over on itself there, so we'll smooth that out. Put it back on. And I think we will be good to go. Okay, so go ahead, the next stitch. Okay, now one thing we could do is we could at this point go ahead and trim this away, but since this is felt, the, the edges are not going to unravel. So what I did with the, the, the first one that I did is I just went ahead and stitched the satin stitch 
around for both layers, the front side and the back side. And I think that'll be fun or fine. And then what I did after that, after it's done, then I trimmed really close to the stitch. I'm going to go ahead and start it up using the same color thread. And this shows we have about five minutes left on the embroidery. So we're almost done. Okay, and after we're done, after we're done with the satin stitch, and what I did is I cut um, two pieces of ribbon, and I, I sewed it down with a, uh, with a straight stitch, okay? I didn't incorporate it into here. I could have, yes, I very well could have done that, but, you know, I waited to after, um, after it was completed, and then I sewed the two pieces of ribbon for, you know, that's going to be for my ties. You can see I just folded them over and stitched them down. Here we're coming to the very end, last stitch. Okay. Okay. And your machine says your embroidery is finished. So you can go ahead and take your hoop off. Okay. And you got your back. And granted, on the back, we used just uh, the white uh, bobbin thread. But, you know, you could have, like I s suggested on the first one that I did, I used... Um, um, I use the green bobbin thread on the back. Okay, so what I would do at this point in time, I would just cut really, really close to the stitch without cutting into any of the satin stitches and go ahead and remove it from the hoop bin. <clears throat> so when you cut, you're going to be cutting through all the layers. Okay, <clears throat> and then on the very et or the center of where it folds, then you, that's where you're going to place your ribbon. Okay, so you're going to cut a length of ribbon, maybe, I don't know, might be eight, nine inches long or something to that effect. Cut it. You're going to cut two pieces of this, one for this side and one for the, the, this side, and then uh, you'll be able to tie it together. Okay, uh, and then you can just sew it down with a straight stitch right in the seam line there. Okay. Um, formation I also you know when I was doing it I I, I kept thinking I, I I try to work outside the box and so with this particular design I thought well that's really pretty with four inches you know so what I did with it is I made <clears throat> a square or a section that was like two and a half inches square using the same idea brought in my stitches Okay, then once I, I created my rows of stitches, I created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did seven rows of stitches that all fit within a two and a half inch square. And then I rotated my, I grouped them together, all of my stitches together, and I rotated it and brought them in um, like this, where I, I created a whole cloth. And I haven't decided quite yet what I'm going to do with this section, but you know, there, I have lots of different ideas. I thought of a bag with a, a zipper in it, you know, with a pink zipper in it, and I thought that, that would be really pretty too. But I haven't gotten around to doing that as of yet, but um, I will do that eventually for sure because I think this turned out so pretty. Okay. Um, if there's any questions, uh, concerning this project or <clears throat> ways I did things on the machine to create this this pattern make sure uh, you stop in 
uh, with uh, and talk to Annette or Larry at Phil's and they'll be happy to give you any input from their perspective and or if you comment on um, on the section here on the YouTube video I will be happy to, to get back with you as well uh, but there again you know if you need any supplies uh, Annette and Larry um, are a fully stocked store so that you can get your supplies, your stabilizer, your needles, your bobbins, your threads, um, and so forth. But um, So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, production, and if you have any questions, just let us know. And so make sure you visit Annette and Larry at Phil's in Washington, Missouri. Okay, thank you, and until next time.